Hello everyone. Welcome to our 30-day Growth Challenge devotional today. My name is Janet Casas and I'm one of the pastors here at The Way World Outreach. And today we're going to look at James 2, 24 through 26. Yesterday we covered James 2, 21 through 24, when we learned that Abraham showed his faith by obeying God and was shown to be right with God by what he did, not just by his faith. Today we're going to see an example of a woman who believed God and showed it by her actions and in doing so changed the course of her life and her family's life. So let's get into today's reading. James 2, 24 through 26 says, So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Rahab, the prostitute, is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. All right, so let's start by looking at James 2 to 24. It says, so you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. This verse gives us a key on how to show that we are right with God. And this is why I'm starting with verse 24, because we're going to see how Rahab today actually was shown to be right with God. Actions coupled with faith is really the key in all of this. Faith alone does not show that we believe in God because others cannot see our faith until we put some actions to it. Faith alone is good. Actions can also be good, but faith and action together gives us access to the supernatural work of God. Therefore, others can see God in our lives through us. They can see him. All right, now James 2.25 says, Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Now let's find out who this woman was. Rahab was actually a prostitute woman living in Jericho. She was a Canaanite woman. She lived in a house that was actually built into the walls of the city of Jericho. She welcomed the messengers sent by Joshua to scout out the land, and she welcomed them into her house. When the king of Jericho found out that there were spies inside the walls of Jericho, he sent out his men to find them. Now, Rahab did what she knew the Lord would want her to do. These were God's people, God's men. And so what she did is she hid them in her roof under some flax. And then when the king's men came knocking at her door, she told them, they have already left. And if you go look for them um, outside the gates, you may find them. She sent them on a different path to give the men of God an opportunity to escape and flee to take back the message to Joshua. Now, her action was key in the mission of Israel possessing the town of Jericho. The spies were there to obtain intelligence that would give Joshua the assurance that his people would have victory in overtaking Jericho and possessing the land. Now, let's look at Joshua 2, 9 through 11. This is where the scriptures talk about Rahab and how um, Joshua sent these men out. Now we see here in this portion of scripture that Rahab believes and declares the Lord as a supreme God. This is how we know that she has faith in God. This is what she says. I know the Lord has given you this land, she told them. We are all afraid of you. Everyone in the land is living in terror. For we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea when you left Egypt. And we know what you did to Sihon and Og, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, whose people you completely destroyed. No wonder our hearts have melted in fear. Now listen to this. This is what she says next. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above 
and the earth below. Now, how do we know that Rahab had faith and believed that God was the true God and he was supreme God over all? Because of her actions. It's very clear to see this because her statements, first of all, that she gave the spies were the confirmation Joshua's spies needed to know that they could possess Jericho. She also spoke about the fear that the men had, that they were so fearful that they couldn't even fight. So they already knew that they could win uh, against Jericho. Now she also, in the midst of all this, negotiated with Joshua's men to save herself and her family. They made an oath to let her live as long as the red rope was hanging outside her window and her relatives were inside a house. This is a woman who believes in God, takes action, but also covers her family and protects her family. I love Rahab's heart. When she found her faith, she now put action to it and that affected her then. But look at this, Rahab put actions to her faith that not only she not only became a heroine for the Jewish people, she actually married into the tribe of Judah and became the mother of Boaz. Now, why is that so significant? It's so significant because Boaz is in the lineage of Jesus. So her actions positioned her to become part of the lineage of Jesus. Now, this is the power of faith coupled with actions. Rahab could have sat in her house and could have said, I believe that's the true God. But she did not really ignite uh, the power of God in her life until she put some actions to it. Now, her actions are her actions shown by what she did. Yes, they are. Her loyalty to God's people showed that she knew that God had greater dominion over her than the king of Jericho. She feared God more than she feared the king. Her actions showed that she was right with God and feared God. She was shown to be right with God. Are your actions showing that you're right with God? In your family, are your actions showing God? When you need to humble yourself and apologize to your spouse, to your parents, to your kids, are you doing it and showing God? Or are you still holding on to your pride? At work, are you showing God? Are you, or are you following along with what others are doing or what others are saying? Or are you standing out by being an excellent employee, by being a peacemaker, by being a team player? This is a time for us to examine ourselves. Is our faith also coupled with actions in our lives? At church, are you just attending? Or are you serving in ministry and discipling others? Remember, we are shown to be right with God by faith and actions, not just by our words and not just by our faith. Our actions actually are what show people that God has made us right. Now, James 2.26, just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without works. What happens when a body no longer breathes? Well, very simply, it dies. It doesn't take very long. Within a 24-hour period, that body begins to really decompose. So also faith is dead without works. This verse is saying that in order for our faith to stay alive, we must do good works. There, might be some, there must be some action that we take when we help others. We're doing a good thing for them, but we are also igniting our faith and therefore keeping our faith alive. If your spiritual life seems to be drying up, Start by putting some action to your faith. You will revive your faith. You will begin to experience the supernatural power of God and live life on fire for God. That is exactly what we want to do. We want to be on fire for him. Now, it's not too complicated. It's actually very simple. We just need to follow God's instructions every day. And we just need to keep 
our faith alive by doing so. So keep your faith alive by just following his instructions. Make it a daily goal to show God by your actions everywhere you go. And that is so important because then everywhere we go, people will see God through us. I hope that you have enjoyed diving into James 2, 24 through 26 with me today. As you can see, this passage gave us insight in how we can keep our faith alive. We also can be shown to be right with God by the actions we take coupled with our faith. It's important to put our action, put action to our faith so that others can see God. It's been such a pleasure sharing this portion of scripture with you. And before uh, we go today, I'd like to encourage you to comment and also share with how this word has blessed you. Share it with those that you know and everyone you can. Tomorrow, our study is going to be in the book of James, and we will continue with James 3, 1 through 5. So before we go, let's pray and let's ask the Holy Spirit to help us ignite uh, our faith by empowering us to take some action. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, today I just thank you for your word. I thank you, God, that this portion of scripture gives us, God, even an example through Rahab, someone who believed that you are the supreme God. She not only believed, but she took action. And that action caused a change in her life, her family's life, her children and her grandchildren's life, and so on, God. And Father, today we just thank you that, Lord, we will be faithful to, Lord, have our faith coupled with action, God, so that we will do good works unto you and the instructions you give us, the assignments you give us each day, we will be able to fulfill them and your supernatural work will be seen. And Father, above all, that our life will show to be right with God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.